Okay, I'd like to call the meeting to order and welcome everyone to the Common Council meeting. If you could all please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mary, if you could help us with the roll call, please. Alderperson Henry. Barron? Here. Valdi? Here. Dean? Here. Grimmer? Here. Casson? Here. Mayor Atwell? Present. Administrator Hafner? Here. And we've got uh, Alderman Eicher is also here. Oh, I'm sorry. Eicher? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. On to citizens' comments number four. Are there any citizens that would like to make comments today? Come on up, Mary. Good evening, everyone. My name is Mary Daniel, and I live here in Delfield at 309 Wisconsin Avenue. This evening, I'd like to talk about or ask questions about the city's financial report from March of 2021. And I'd like you to refer to the page titled, helps when you put your glasses on, Capital Project Summary 2021, dated 3, 3121. So it's the page that looks kind of like this. So I'd like you to go, if you have it up on your screen, if not, it'll work, uh, to the year 2017 as an example. To the best of my knowledge, all of these capital projects are completed. My question to you is why are they still what I consider open? Dollars in parentheses are over budget and some lines still have balances. Over budget total for 2017 is 31,000. Approved projects have another 11,000 still not spent. My math for 2017, there appears to be a deficit of $19,000. Where does this money come from? Is there a report that shows the approved, tra an approved trail of the transactions for expenditures above or below the budget amounts? Now, if you happen to have that up, go down to the year 2020. The Nagawicka Road separated path, which is Oakwood Road to the bridge line, as of this report, says this project is 65,000 plus over budget, where in the 2000, 20 capital budget will that $65,000 come from. So as a taxpayer and a citizen here in Delafield, I would like to request answers to the two above questions put on the next agenda. I am aware I can do a request for information, but it only gives me the answer, not all of the citizens and taxpayers. I'm guessing, maybe I'm wrong, I hope I am, that some members of this council may not be per familiar with this process and by speaking to it in citizens comments my hope is that we all will learn more. I will leave a copy of my citizens comments for the secretary to refer to. I know they do not have to be recorded as I have spoken them but I hope that the dollars I am referring to get recorded accurately. So thank you. And now that it's raining, tomorrow we can all mow our lawns. <laughs> Great. Thank you for your comments. Thank you, Mary. You're welcome. Is there anybody else? Anybody else? Come on up, Susie. Susie Thompson, 700 Milwaukee Street. That's the first time I've ever had to move a microphone higher for myself. <laughs> Um, several things. First of all, Friends of Bark River did clean up along the river a week ago uh, Sunday and there were 28 people. I had never done it before. It was my first time. I was extraordinarily impressed. I clean up garbage every day, four times a day in downtown when I walk my dog. My husband does as well. 
Um, we have been appalled at the amount of garbage that has been thrown out, and we need to do something about it as a city. We talk about a lot of frivolous things when there are things that are important, like single-serving alcohol bottles that are thrown into the, um, I, I call it the water retention pond behind City Hall. Um, I pick up three times a week anywhere from two dozen to three dozen single-serving bottles in that retention area. I pick up um, Bacardi 151 um, full liter bottles, uh, tequila bottles, whiskey bottles, Marks. It, it's ridiculous. I don't know who's drinking all this alcohol and why they throw the bottles there. I don't know why they throw them along the roadside, but we have to stop it. So we need to do something about that. Jim Ryer and his wife Paula um, were so professional at teaching all of us what to do. I'd never done a cleanup before, and it was impressive. Patrick Burns, who's Mike Burns' son, um, worked together with two other guys that the three of them together led a group of teenagers who came and did public service. Patrick Burns, I asked him to follow up with me, and he is following up. I did talk to Jim Ryer today. Uh, I had an email sent out with Mike Burns and Mary Daniel as well, and we corresponded over that. Um, Patrick would like to offer youth support in the project that we had talked about originally doing in 2020 that got delayed because of COVID, which is working on the bronze statues. The one outside the library here was installed when the building was put up. It's part of a set of three. Uh, the other two are in what they call Grandma's Attic at the Department of Public Works. Mary Daniela and I and Mike Burns, uh, but Mary Daniela and I had done everything in person. We were coordinating with Mike, but we were doing it during the business day when Mike was working. Mary and I did extensive research. We had everything all ready to go. I had uh, a donor secured to do it in 2020, and then it got tabled because of COVID. We are going to revitalize that project. I do have a donor who is going to pay for it, that donor is not to be publicly known until we get farther along. As Tom Hafner knows, when we did the totem pole project, I led that. I said I had concern that that totem pole, I am clairvoyant, just so you all know, and I am, I am uh, recorded or registered as a clairvoyant with Delafield, Brookfield, Elm Grove, Wauwatosa, Milwaukee, the state of Illinois, the state of Wisconsin, the state of Indiana, state of Arizona, Maricopa County, which is Phoenix, Arizona. And um, my only thing with clairvoyance is that I don't know if it's happening now, if it happened in the past, but if I, if I had a vision that somebody died and I see you before me, I know it's not current and I know it's not, it could be future, but it's not current and it's not in the past because I see you. So sometimes it's by deduction. Um, I had told Tom that that I had a vision that that totem pole was gonna come down during the winter of 2019. And I was really freaked out about it and I insisted that we get it done. We did have that pulled out of the ground, if you all recall, in November 2019. Dan Audi with Lakeside Construction who did the condos um, that are gonna be talked about. Um, I'm sorry, I know you're not supposed to talk. The four, the four white um, box townhouses right across from the Department of Tourism, right across from where the totem pole was. Dan Audi had what they called a super forklift. He donated his time, he donated his equipment, he had 14 people with uh, Lakeside Construction that volunteered for that totem pole project. Hey Susie, you're almost at five minutes, you have to wrap it up. I, I will wrap it up. I did get the donor to pay for it, that was uh, Rob and Christy Miller paid for it personally and they, they knew the price, but they knew that with construction, there can always be variables. The person who's going to pay for the bronze statues know that there's always variables. We're gonna do that this summer. We can't do it until the weather's over 70. I will let you know when we're ready to do it. And we're going to have somebody from the public museum that's going to come and teach us how to do it. I've already talked to bronze artists, two bronze artists in the US. I talked to one in Europe. I've done bronze myself. All right, and thank, thank you so very much. we're going to have we're going to have that project done. I just wanted to let you know. Thank you. Thank Great. you, Susie. Thank you for your comments. Okay. Anybody else have comments? Anybody online have comments? No one online. Okay. 
Citizens' comments are now closed. We'll move on to number five, the consent agenda. Move to approve the consent agenda. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Passes. Okay, we'll move on to number six, board committee and commission reports. Uh, a, the country fire and rescue, Mr. Grimmer. Uh, Bob Bellin of Shaniqua resigned as um, the president of Lake Country Fire and Rescue. Um, uh, Bob has uh, overseen, overseen that, uh, that commission for many years and we're all grateful for his service. Um, Rob Bennett was elected as president um, in his stead and um, um, we'll carry on Bob's duties here, here forward. Um, I was elected vice president and will um, obviously uh, utilize all the power that comes with that position. <laughs> uh, revenues are uh, on projected from uh, budget. Expenses are fair, pretty much on budget as expected. Um, it's going to be um, with the consolidation of all the municipalities. It's and the revenue is not, you know, you don't, you earn revenue in January, but you don't realize revenue until a few months later. So um, more to come, but that's uh, all, all is well. Good, thank you very much. Okay, Phil, I believe you said there was no Lake Welfare Committee. Covered at the last meeting, yep. Yep, for the last meeting, so we'll skip that. Uh, 6C, Park and Recreation Commission, Tree Board. Mr. Tree Grimmer. Tree board, uh, Dave Brabson was uh, re-elected as chair. Um, I think Sean has bids for um, tree planting out this Saturday or the past Saturday, so last Saturday. Um, installs for this year's tree planting are in early June and the tree fund balance is 49,000 currently but will decrease to less than 30,000 with this year's tree planting. Um, obviously there was a time when it was over 200,000, uh, but we've successfully utilized those funds and put a lot of trees in the ground. So that's a success story. Um, that's all I have for tree board, park and rec. Uh, Mike Burns was elected chair of park and rec. Dan Cahalan was elected to represent uh, the Park and Rec on Plan Commission. Um, public recognition of Jim Ryer for all his many years of service um, to the city and to uh, the Park and Rec uh, Commission. And our park walk is May 23rd at 8.30 a.m. Uh, meeting at the bridge, the bridge at Liberty Park. Can you uh, just repeat that date one more time? May 23rd at 8.30 a.m. at the Liberty Park Bridge. Is that a Saturday? It's a Sunday. Sunday? That's a Sunday. My nephew graduates from Marquette. <laughs> That's why yes. I know. A lot of graduations yeah. that weekend, so we moved it to a Sunday. So you can say a few novenas on the way. <laughs> there you go. Um, I think that's all I have then. Great. Thank you very much. All right. Planning Commission. Mr. Eicher. All right, we did have a meeting on April 28th. Um, two public hearings, one was about a accessory <coughs> building um, increase in size, and I don't know if the applicant feels it was a compromise, but we did allow them to increase a little bit above what would normally be permissible, um, not as big as they wanted. And the other one was uh, for an item that's in front of us today. Um, before I talk about that, the third item that we talked about um, that's in the paper is um, the old Perkins. Um, we have an applicant in the Olive Garden um, looking to go in. So everything that they're doing there uh, conforms with the intended use of the property as far as the, the business type, structure size and things like that. They were just in front of us for a for, uh, um, business plan of operation and, and site review um, for the appearance of the building in that. They had several outstanding items about water runoff and other things that they need to clean up and we'll see them again next month. Um, expect them to have that done. They seemed eager to do so. Um, so it'll be a good addition to that area. We think, and um, uh, the other item uh, that I just want to mention is that um, the much talked about development for the Weiss River property on the east side of Nagawica Lake, it looks like it'll be on our agenda for next month. If you're interested, please weigh in. There's a public hearing scheduled 
at the last Wednesday in May for the proposal for um, Castle Senior Living, I think is the name, um, in place of the Seven Seas Restaurant. Um, then the item there was a public hearing about is um, if you're from, is item 3A. Just give you a little background. There's four condominiums that are all in one building. They're attached to one another across the street from our wonderful Hawks Inn. And um, as a part of their, if you're familiar, everyone know what I'm talking about. Um, yep. If you're familiar with um, their application, they proposed to, and it was suggested to them to put in uh, four parking places on the south end of the property um, uh, on Well Street to uh, accommodate, really our thought was um, drop-offs, pickups, deliveries, things like that, um, because that is kind of inherent in our culture now. Um, and um, they ran into all sorts of uh, utility work hurdles that made that economically um, a really big heavy lift. And so to accommodate it, they talked with Public Works and a good solution was to move the addresses for those units to the north side of the building um, so that they would be on Main Street um, so that people looking to drop off, pick up, park, et cetera, would um, using that space instead of across the street, instead of in front of the building on the south end. So this was something that was approved by Plan Commission for our uh, approval here because it changes the conditional use. It was part of their agreement. So I'll, I'll make a motion to approve uh, the removal of the park parking stalls. And in lieu of that, there's payment uh, in the form of, I forget the total quantity. $15,000. $15,000. Um, for the city to find parking someplace else. Um, so that'll, that'll be my motion. I'll second, second it. <clears throat> second by Jim? Yeah. Okay. Any discussion? I, Hearing I'll none? Make one, I'll make one other comment. I, I looked at the plans and the way it was drawn really kind of disrupted the sidewalk. Yeah. And uh, I think design-wise it was a good idea to just compromise on it. So, we, we, yeah, the, the way it is, it's it's fine the way it is. And yeah, the intent was trying to find a spot for parking, and we were worried about, like I said, uh, based on how the buildings faced and were addressed, um, access to mostly deliveries, and yeah. what they ended up with leaves the aesthetics intact and the parking and the and the sidewalk straight. And, yeah. and so I agree. Well, and those delivery trucks can go right to the two-car garage to whomever they're delivering yeah. to. Drop it off right. right at the garage. When the addresses were moved to the other side. Yes. <laughs> that was key. Exactly. All righty. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Extensions passes. And the next one, item uh, D3B, um, seeing the packet, there's ordinance number 780. Um, this was to um, really not clean up, but really clarify definitions surrounding uh, fences. What a decorative fence is, how to permit one of those versus a standard fence. Um, there was significant, uh, it actually is part of a cleanup. Um, Scott Hussinger has dealt with some neighbor issues, some spike fences that have gone up um, because of the materials that they were made out of where they fell in the cracks of our code. And we asked him long, a while ago, what would you do to fix it? And uh, so the solution is to, to tight, more tightly define what those different fence types are, um, give him a clear path to issue permits, and where there's anything in a gray area, it just goes in front of Planning Commission for approval. And so that's really the intent of this, is to get rid of, um, uh, in particular, barbed wire fences, um, fences made of like a row of pallets leaned up against trees or bars, or um, snow fences that were left up permanently um, to kind of just tell your neighbors to keep their dog out instead of doing something appropriate. Um, those types of things now are getting handled. So I'll make a motion to approve ordinance number 780. I'll second the motion. Seconded by Phil. Is there any discussion? Um, so it, just for clarification, if I'm reading this correctly, the 50% is now totally removed. Is that correct? Because any, any, any fence will now need a permit, correct? I'm a, is that right? The intent is to, what this does is it in, actually increases the number of 
fences that would need permits because of some of these other ones that didn't require them before, like quote temporary fences mm -hmm. that would stayed up permanently. Then they were of a material that wasn't defined. Right. But Is there any fence that wouldn't need one? Need a, a because of step number two there actually indicates uh, pretty much anything would need permit. Unless I'm misreading something. There's there's no exception. So if one, somebody wanted to just put a you got a walkway and they want to put a four foot section on each side with a little archway, they need a permit, right? There was some discussion that some minor things that would just be like a, a, a panel section or something could be interpreted <coughs> by the building inspector as landscaping as opposed yes. to a fence. It just give the building inspector a call if you're putting the structure in your backyard that you think a neighbor might take issue with is really the intent here. Um, so uh, like an entrance to a garden or something? Like I don't know what, what are those called? Um, <laughs> Arbor. Uh, Arbor. 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 Ar Arbor. Yeah, an arbor. Yeah, things like that. It's landscaping, and he'll he'll just clear it up for you if you need a if you need a permit or not. Okay. Anytime you're putting in a fence, you should call the building inspector. <laughs> sure. Okay. Think there's a hidden pitfall that we should send it back to the plan commission on, or what? I mean, it's fine. I mean, we're not in a hurry. Yeah. So if there's, if you think there's a, uh, you mean the fifty percent open space or what? Where's the? There isn't a fee for applying for the permit, is there? I mean, you're going to the building inspector. So I, I think at the you, meeting, Scott said it was. Did he say fifteen dollars? I think. It's okay. not. It's not free. But okay. No, I mean, I he. We do pay him. Yeah, I know. So. I I I know he he is a inspector in many municipalities I assume he gave the recommendations on this I, I oh this is his, yeah this is almost this is 90 95% I mean, his work and there is a science or an art to this and it, I know his he's good <laughs> what yeah what he is looking to what he was really looking for is to not have to wonder what we really meant and just have clear direction on when to send it to the plan commission and so he he leveraged his experience in other municipalities and took the best of the best. Um, and that's always the fail safe is to go to the plan commission. So Scott will defer. So, I mean, he'll tell you if you need a permit or not. And if you disagree with them, you can even come to the plan commission. Right. right. It's, it's not meant to be restrictive. It's meant to be clear. Does that make sense? I think, I think it, it's a really good idea to delineate it and, and just talk to the inspector my experience and observation is that when we left at Lucy Goosey, there have been some pretty unpleasant situations that have bubbled up. So I think it's better to. That's have why we're addressing it. A, a real famous one shortly that this takes care of is somebody taking um, rope and and uh, like <laughs> um, a boat tarp and putting it between two trees yeah. as, a, as a way to tell their neighbor they don't want to look at them anymore. And that wasn't defined in our ordinance as a fence, and this takes care of that. Alrighty, is there any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions passes. And that'll do it for Plant Commission. Great, thank you. Okay, we're on to Mayor's Report. 7A, discussion possible action on the following items, Mayor's appointments. I'll so move the list in the agenda. I'll second. All right, is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Passes. So I just wanted to mention that, um, you know, over the last several years, we've had different people kind of interpret some parts of the code on the appointment part. And um, for another meeting, I'm going to bring up um, maybe a way that at least I'm thinking might reduce, get rid of some of this redundancy. Uh, just for example, you know, Dear Management Committee, Tom Turnock, or Tim Turnock, um, the Park and Rec voted to have him serve on the Deer Committee. Now, is that necessary that the Common Council approve Park and Rec's choice to the Deer Committee <laughs> <laughs> and put it in the agenda? So we're just going to take a look at it and bring something for your consideration in the future. Good idea. Okay. Um, Two, uh, consideration of how and when to end the mass requirements 
in Sydney buildings. Um, and this, my intent is to have this discussion not include the library. Library is separate. Library can make their own rules for their facility. This is just when you're in city buildings. You know, we have uh, the, the most vulnerable parts of our population have uh, certainly had the opportunity and most likely been vaccinated. Um, we have a lot of people that have had COVID that um, um, are safer, uh, while not immune, safer. Um, and I'm getting a lot of comments from people that are attending meetings asking, when are you gonna stop making us wear these masks? <laughs> so, you know, I, I'm looking for council's input on when we could do that. I mean, my personal opinion is I'm ready to start today. Did we ever have, I mean, did we ever have the legal authority um, after the state mandate ended to require masking in a public building? I don't think we did. Yeah, After the governor's state, that, Matt, it's certainly been an advisory. I mean, there's been oh no, and I'm not I'm not arguing meetings. masks back or forth, but yeah. this is I'm arguing the the is this is this point moot yeah. that we don't have the legal authority to mandate them, nor do we have the legal authority to discourage them. I I, I think we run a business when we get to run a business how we want to run it. <laughs> yeah. That's true. Well, that's a good point because we can do a lot of things and unless someone yeah. comes to us and says, that's not legal, that's not right, yeah. I'm taking you to court, yeah. but there we may can be do whatever we want. There may be a difference between a private business and a public yeah. government. Um, I mean, if we want to, we could pursue a legal opinion, but I don't know that we, we need to. I don't want to, no. We have, we, I had one point, I thought I said we'd follow the county. Well, the county, at this point, the courthouse has to have them yet because the Supreme Court has said you have to have them. But in the administration center, that's no longer required. My office, we still require them. And I, we have our reasons. Um, but at some point, that's going to end. We're going to discuss it in about two weeks. At your office? At my office. And it's probably moving in the direction of of having them out. You know, we're a place of public accommodation, and for now we are we have a lot of people coming in from outside. So we continue to show a mask so people are comfortable. I think we um, should also consider what health experts are saying. I mean, none of us are epidemiologists as far as I know. Please correct me if I'm wrong. I know I'm not. I know um, I'm sick of them and I'd love to be without them. I, you know, I'm hearing disabled. So for me, the masks are extremely frustrating because I'm, I need your face to really help me understand what you're saying. So it's been a year of a lot of struggle personally. Um, but at the same time, you know, um, the recommendations as far as I know are to outside, if especially I have my vaccine. I know a lot of us have been vaccinated and that gives me some more confidence, but I would talk to my doctor. Maybe we should speak to some healthcare experts before we just decide, you know, like we're sick of them. I think everybody's sick of them. I'm sure people were sick of Auschwitz too when they were there, but they couldn't just leave. So. You know, I won't beat a dead horse, but I just think we should we should consider what health experts might tell us rather than what we're sick of. Could I ask what the staff feels? I mean, yeah, that's what I was going to ask. The, the they're staff. the ones that have to be there. So can, can you talk into your oh, mic? We can't hear you. Um, I'm just asking what what how does the staff feel about this? Like, do they want people coming in to be wearing masks or are they comfortable with that? Because they're the ones that have to be in the office, so. Yeah, I mean, you can ask Mary's yeah, opinion. That's, Maybe that's she's talked asking. to yeah, I mean, other yeah, folks. How, I mean, in the you, office, we generally don't wear masks, and we have that divider up. Okay, because I, I mean, I feel like you guys are the ones that are there, and if you're comfortable with it, then I wouldn't. I think we have enough options for people to be able to do things online and make accommodations. That if the staff is comfortable, I, I feel that that should be. Wait heavily. I can confirm the staff is comfortable uh, without masks. And I don't have an issue with the staff doing what they feel comfortable doing. Um, I guess, and I don't necessarily have an issue um, with the public meetings, but I guess that's the other half of the equation. What's the recommendation from council on the public meetings? Most, 
you know, if you're vaccinated, your risk of severe disease and illness is, you know, very small, 5%. You know, I, I can tell you the reason we're waiting two weeks is that it appears that everyone that can, wants a vaccine can now right. have it. And we're still within the two week or two month or month window. And that's kind of why we're delaying. And that's a, because, I think and, that's and I say you bring up staff, that's my own staff. There's a divided, there's some that really want to see it continue. And, you know, so in the meantime, we've also said, well, what's the objective standard? Well, the objective standard is when everyone can get vaccinated and then you're beyond the safe period, we're done, you know? So we're not quite there yet, but, uh, No, I, you know, I, I mean, if, if I were to, if you want, want to move or something, I'd say June 1st, we'd be done. Is that a motion? I'll make a motion. Second. What is the motion? That we're going to, we will no longer require the mask on the public or staff or at meetings after June 1st. Did we, uh, can I, someone refresh my recollection, did we vote to require masks in the first place? No, maybe the motion should be that June 1st, we will no longer encourage masks. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we, well, I don't think wait, that's an appropriate, I it's like, I should we no longer encourage hand washing in the bathroom either? Yeah. <laughs> so, so maybe there isn't a motion needed at all. If we're saying we never passed anything that said that you have to wear a mask, then it's your choice whether you have to wear a mask in city buildings. I think it always has been, you know, now that the, safer at home order was vacated by the Supreme Court. Well, I'm fine with that too. Um, I would say that the council can speak to um, what they're comfortable with. Because yeah. um, I don't want to not encourage people that feel they need to no, wear a mask to wear a mask. And that's a big part of it. You go into a room and this is, you know, I see this at the various meetings that I attend. If everybody's wearing a mask, I'll wear a mask. If everybody's not wearing a mask, I'm not wearing a mask. There is a lot of that um, uh, whatever you want to call it, that, that social, social impact. peer pressure? Yeah, that like social peer school? pressure. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And I'm, you know, I do the same. But I've been vaccinated, and I'm comfortable I, either I way. I thought we voted just to follow this, this county's guideline. We did. I think that was it. And now the county, uh, as of March 31st, was does done. not require a mask. In the, in the there are, I did some research, they were at Waukesha County's at 35% vaccination. It was one of the leading counties not as much as 60% of Dane County. There are counties like Outagamee and Brown and, and Dane that still are requiring masks. But that's why I second his motion at June 1st. Hopefully by June 1st, I believe enough people will have been encouraged to get um, vaccinated and it'll be safe enough. Those who still want to wear masks can still wear them. But if you're concerned, then get vaccinated or as you said, apply, join by Skype but uh, so I don't know what the wor wording is, but his mem. I no, know, I'll, I'll vote. For, I I think it's reasonable. I think your eight. argument about what you're doing at the Register yeah. of Deeds office is a is a rational, prudent argument that yeah. says, okay, vaccine is available to everyone. Let's just give them a few more weeks to it's, get it done. That's what we're looking at. I I, I think. The, oh, I'm sorry. Could we phrase it more like starting June 1st, we would encourage people to make their own decision about whether they need, they feel they should be wearing a mask? Something that way versus encouraging or discouraging? I think that's happening right now. I, th I think the motion, <laughs> I think the motion, I think the motion with um, just saying we don't, we no longer require masks on June 1st. I mean, we're requiring them by inference by all, having us all wear them. And as long as we have, you know, the Zoom option available and I think, and, and I trust that staff will, will do it. If we very, very clearly and plainly state what our policy is, what you're gonna see when you walk in the building, on the door, just saying staff is not required to wear masks inside this building. You're free to do as you're comfortable. Like to your point, if we can just make that, make what the actual policy is, you know, what's actually, what, what they're gonna see when they come in the building. That is it. You're going to see people without masks in this building. If you're uncomfortable, don't don't come in or wear a mask or go online. It's at individual discretion. 
right. Jim, it's your motion you know, until it's I put to the floor, so it's whatever way you yeah, want. And could I get a clarification on the motion? What does the motion actually say? I, I, and I don't I, want to nitpick this, but uh, people well, go nuts. My, my people intent, go nuts over masks in this country my on both was sides. That we were going to operate as we have been until June 1st, and then we're done. <laughs> like Katie by the door. <laughs> <laughs> to set a date that's beyond when everyone who wants to get a vaccine and has an opportunity will have done so. So would you amend your motion to encourage people to get vaccinated? Sure. <laughs> would you second that? Oh yeah, he owns the motion, so my second is fine, yeah. Great. Okay, so Mary, I wanna make sure you got yeah, the motion, yeah. right? Because you're the one that has to write it down. I, I'm well, not comfortable with that. As far as encouraging, I, I feel people need to make their own decisions about vaccination. That's a very personal decision. There's a lot of reasons to do it or to not do it. Um, I wouldn't be comfortable encouraging people to get vaccinated. I think that if we're going to talk about the mask issue, I think we should leave it at the mask issue. That people should ha that we're leaving it open to people making their their choice for whether or not they wear a mask. Well, I'm going to, I'll, I'll, I'll amend my motion again to just. <laughs> <laughs> are we really, but wait a minute, are right? we really discouraged? Are we, we're not encouraging people no, to get I vaccinated? Think people, I think people should get vaccinated. I mean, personally, I think people should get vaccinated. I am vac I'm fully vaccinated You're as well. nuts if you don't. But, but I <laughs> well, also careful. have family members who have medical reasons why they can't. No, so okay. So that's a very personal decision for people, and I think people need to do what they feel advice. is best for Again, them. Again, we're and not I, telling them they have to. We're just encouraging them. I think a if better way to word it. It's uncomfortable for yeah. talking about the mask issue. To a better people. way to word it might be, if you can, <laughs> then consider vaccination. Because I agree, um, some people, for medical reasons, cannot. I think, too, that you know, there has to be a point in time where we encourage, if you are able to be vaccinated, but to then make it a choice to continue wearing a mask inside, you know, after June 1st, whatever the date is. I think that's a rational thing. Could we also just make the motion to say we're follow Waukesha County, we'll follow Waukesha County's lead and people can, I think Take we're trying to make a motion for us right here on our own. I think that's kind of the objective here. Okay. Yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm not comfortable with just like me, yeah. Okay, so Jim, why don't you rephrase what you believe your last motion to be? So my, my mask motion is to continue the current policy of requesting masks or enforcing masks within this building at meetings until June 1st. And at that point, it's up to the individual. There you go. Okay. Second okay with that? Yes. Great. Mary, you got that? I got it. Okay. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Abstentions? Passes. Okay. We will move on to eight new business. Approval of vouchers. Move to approve the voucher list. Can somebody pass the voucher? Second. Tim, uh, second. Tim and, okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Passes. Okay, number nine, report to city officials, city administrator. Yeah, just a few things this evening. First of all, uh, if there's anybody out there with uh, um, People 18 years and older, we are still looking for DPW seasonal employees. Uh, we still need three employees. Oh, are you? Do you? Yep. I, I work with 18 year old teenage lads that, and you young could, ladies that might be interested. You could send them in the direction of Paul Zellner. Um, we're looking for people to work on the lake and work in the parks. Um, number two, we look forward to uh, Molly Schneider starting as the city clerk this Thursday. So staff is very excited about that. And um, then I just want to mention uh, kind of a reminder that uh, we've got that economic development opinion survey and visual preference survey that we're asking citizens and business owners to take. Uh, you've got until this Friday to take that. And to take it, you go to www.delafieldgrowth.com. 
A uh, couple other reminders about um, uh, brush collection and brush drop-off. Uh, the spring brush collection this week is, um, or this year is uh, not next week, but the following week, the week of May 17th. Uh, so get your brush out there for pickup. And then uh, throughout the summer, uh, the brush drop-off uh, over at Cushing Park uh, Road is open the first and third Saturday of each month from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. That's all I've got. Great, thank you. City Clerk? No report. No report. City Treasurer, March 2021 Treasurer's Report is in your packet. D, Council Request for Future Agenda Items. <coughs> Any future agenda items? Hearing none. Seeing that we have no further business, the meeting is now adjourned at 740.